In this design tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do a simple fire equipment logo. So, hi guys and welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this simple fire equipment logo here. Alright, so first of all, what I'm going to do is just again create a new canvas via the file menu. I'm just going to go to file, new, and we're going to get a new window. First of all, I'm going to put here just the name of my logo, which is now obviously Fire Logo. Then as well, I'm going to choose really my presets again, my canvas size, which is basically 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. You guys can also choose your own custom width and height as well down here. Just add them. I added these because that fits nicely with my screen recorder. Okay, great. So I'm going to hit OK here. Directly we get a new canvas and we're going to start working on this. As well as you guys can see the background layer here is still locked. I'm just going to double tap on here and as well write background. You guys can feel free to write anything that you like. Okay, then as well I'm just going to move this a little bit to the side and as well select our canvas again, press F, nice and full screen, we're not distracted by the background. Okay, so first of all what I want to do is create some guidelines, so we, again we can start working with guidelines. These I normally do via my action palette here at the top. If your action palette is not visible, please go to window and select actions here. As well I've also showed a, re a tutorial how to work with actions, if you remember we had a tutorial about that. So simply I'm going to select the guidelines and play them. And now we already have our two guidelines. Okay, great. So next step we're going to do is first of all create our custom shape here. So let's go over to the shape tool and already it's selected here and again custom shapes as well. Great. So I'm going to go to the library here from my shapes. And as you guys can see here we got a few ones. And I'm basically looking for the default shapes here from Photoshop. And I'm actually looking for this particular one here. So again, I'm going to select that, and as well, I'm going to go over here to the color, and let's just this time, we're going to select a nice blue color over here, so like a turquoise or something in that direction, it's a little bit more blue. Okay, I'm going to tap here again, because if you normally tap escape, the color goes away again, so just tap here back into the options bar. Okay, this time I'm going to hold shift, so it's equally expanding our new shape, and I'm just going to click and drag that shape all the way out. So it's nice and big. Okay, I'm going to drop it and as well going to press Command T, not to transform now, but just to get these little anchor points here so I know when it's exactly in the center of my canvas. I'm going to press quickly the Move tool. Okay, I need to do that step again, Command T, and just with my cursors without the Move tool, just move it left and right and up and down. And now that's really nicely centered. As well, I'm working with a Mac, so I say Command. If you're a Windows user, please use Control when I say Command. Okay, I'm going to accept this from the top, and that's basically now our start. So, then as well, we're going to select a font, first of all, that we're going to work with. So, I'm going to take the text tool on the left-hand side here, and simply just going to make a big text, not on our shape. So, let's just do it over here. We can do it something like that. Great. And I've already selected my font that I want. I have did this previously, so I basically just went to the fonts here, and I've selected a font called America Captain, which actually sounds a bit weird. It should actually sound Captain America. But anyways, you guys can also find American Captain down below in the description, or if you guys want to download it, you can also go to dafont.com and you'll find it there as well. Great, so let's also start typing now. First of all, I want to type FIRE with capital letters. So again, FIRE it will be my size, I don't know yet, so I'm first of all going to accept this and as well take the move tool and just drag this a little bit down. So again, the first thing that I also want to do is rotate my shape a little bit. As you guys can see, the shape side over here and the font side, they don't line up really nicely. So I want to rotate the shape so it ni uh, lines up really nicely with the fire. So let's do that. I'm going to select shape over here, again press Command T, and then literally just take this anchor point here or move over the anchor point, hold and rotate this slowly. Great, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and you guys can see it's still not fitting perfectly. So again, rotate a little bit more, like so. Okay, and we can rotate this a little bit more, a little bit back. Great, I'm going to accept that and that's perfect. So I'm going to move it a little bit in. Yep, and that hides perfectly as well. You guys can see the outlines here from the path, from our shape. So there you can see it works perfectly. But now my font, or basically the fire font, is still too small. So again, I'm going to select the text tool, select fire, select all of it, 
and I want to make it nice and big. So let's stretch it all the way up to 137. It's a little bit too big. Well, actually a little bit more because I want to have this corner and the bottom corner of my font reach exactly the corners of my shape. So let's accept that. Take the Move tool and first of all move that a little bit over. Now, as you guys can see, that fits almost. Actually, it is perfect. Let me just move that in a little bit. Yeah, and that works really great. And that's already the first step just of creating the shape over here. So again, now I can take shape and fire as well. Hold shift, select both of these layers and just move that a little bit into the center again. So it's a little bit off center now, but it's still fine. Okay, great. So I've already got fire and already got my shape, but I don't really like the color, the blue of the shape now. So I'm basically going to change it again. Very simple to do that. Just select the shape layer over here double tap onto the shape icon here or onto the layer actually and the solid color picker will come up and you guys can now easily choose a complete new color over here even if you want a red green yellow whatever you want I want the light blue again so I'm actually gonna go a step back over here just say cancel double tap on there again so get into the right colors and yeah just gonna make it a little bit darker like so great Okay, so that's again my first step. Now again, I also want to duplicate, or well, actually I'm not going to duplicate the font. Let's start creating a fresh font again. So again, T for the text tool. This time I'm just going to make a selection down here. And as well, I'm just going to write equipment. So this is totally random as well. You can write anything you want. Again, here equipment, you can also write fire solutions or fire company or whatever. So I'm going to go with equipment today. So I've typed everything already. I'm just going to press Command A to select all. And the font is too big at the moment. That's why you're not seeing anything. Let me just drag the font all the way down so we can actually see the font. I'm just going to select the font again and a little bit more down. Great, like so. I'm going to accept that again and as well move that a little bit closer in. And it's supposed to go somewhere over here. Okay, I can also make this a little bit bigger still. So again, text tool, select it again. And I'm literally just going to make it double the size, say like around 20, 25 maybe. 23 pixels actually. Okay, and now I still want to space all of it. So again, text tool, select all of it. And now we're just going to go into our characters. As well, if you guys don't have the character box, just go to window again and select your character box. Okay, so I'm going to take the tracking here and just move the tracking all the way out. So I want the T actually to end somewhere here with the E. Okay, I'm going to accept that and just move that up a little bit again. Okay, like so. Maybe down a little bit as well. A little bit to the side. That we can still decide later as well. Next step, again, a new layer down here. We can just turn this off here. Sorry. Okay, next layer. And this is going to be just a stripe. So again, M marking tool, as you guys can see, and not the elliptical, the rectangular marking tool, please. And we're just going to make a rough selection like so around equipment, but going over our shape here, like so. And I'm just looking at the width here of my selection, actually. A little bit more down. Okay. I'm going to fill this up now very simply. Inside of the selection, I'm going to hit right click, fill this up here. The content area will come up. And I'm just going to fill this again with white content area. So under my contents, not color anything, just white. Okay, great. Command D. So again, we've cut out the shape again a little bit. But obviously the equipment is now gone because the font is on white. But that we're going to change in a minute now. Let's just select the text tool again. Click somewhere down here, which obviously automatically de detects uh, your font there. So I'm going to select the whole font and as well give this a new color. I'm just going to go back to the color here at the top. And let's give this like a really nice fire orange. Okay, a little bit lighter actually. Let's have a look here if we take the color down like so. Okay, going to accept this and accept it from the top. Now we still just need to move the layer on top so we can actually see it again. Great, so there it is. Then as well, if I'm still not happy with the little E pointing out here, you can still take the move tool and just move that in a little bit space that correctly. Okay, so for the last step now, I still want to add a really nice flame here on the top. So this is not too difficult actually. I'm going to press F, get out of the full screen again, and quickly going to move over here to a new canvas that I'm going to show you guys. So literally I'm just going to drag this little 
image here over to our canvas. I'm going to press F again and let me talk a little bit about this. So I went on to Shutterstock again and found some really cool graphics about five flames. So I pulled one of these flames out of uh, Shutterstock and I'm not basically going to use these flames. I'm just going to take them as a reference. So again, I'm going to press Command T, make them really nice and big and kind of the size that I can actually see the flame really nice and big. So I'm going to accept this now and this is kind of the size and as you guys can see the flame is also very pixelated and broken and I would not recommend use this. Then rather go and buy it from Shutterstock if you really want these flames exactly. But you can also do your own custom shape with it now. I'm going to press again once more Command T, hold Shift again here, select the little anchor point, just drag this out a little bit more so it just gets a little bit bigger. So I've selected this uh, flame down here and I want to actually replicate this and build this. So I'm not going to show it now the whole process. I've done that already, showing you guys how to build custom shapes. Have a look, we've created a tutorial for that as well. Basically what I'm going to do is just take the pen tool, literally put an anchor point, an anchor point over here and start replicating exactly the outlines of the shape. So again with Alt moving all the way down. So I'm just quickly showing you guys kind of the process in a little bit. So again, but if you want to have more about this, go have a look at our tutorial. I'm going to go all the way down and kind of, yeah, just replicate this fire shape. So that's the whole process that I'm going to do. Okay, all the way around. I'm just doing it really roughly now and quickly. Okay, like so. And this is basically, say for instance, all the paths that I did around the shape. Once I'm done, I'm just going to hit right click on here and say define custom shape. Then again, our shape uh, library actually comes up, as you guys can see, and now we have the shape. I'll just rename this, say for instance, to fire1, fire2, whatever. Hit OK, and that will be saved into our library. I'm going to hit cancel now again escape out of the pen tool and delete this layer again because I've done this process already. If you guys want to know more about the whole step also have a look at our tutorial how to create your custom shapes. Okay so once you've done the whole process you basically go back to your shapes again custom shapes over here and you go back to your shape library and Photoshop has saved that in your Photoshop library all the way at the bottom. So I'm gonna go all the way down and as you guys can see here is my shape number one from the fire and shape number two. So I took a little bit more time and cutting this out really nicely and carefully as well. Okay, so I'm going to select the shape. That's why I also jumped ahead of this step. Now I'm going to go back to the fill color over here. Going to select again the color, which is basically the orange that I want over here. But let's maybe keep the orange to the same orange that we used down here. So I'm going to double tap on here, which basically calls up the color again. Then on here, the color picker and I'm going to select this color down here. Great. Hit OK. And as well I'm going to go out of this again and now I just need to create the shape. So I'm going to hold Shift and just equally expand this here and drag this nice shape out. Great. And there we already have our new shape. Now again I'm just going to press Command T in order to rotate this. Again Windows users don't forget press Control when I say Command. Okay, rotate this a bit more there we go. Okay, and we already have our new shape here just with the fire. Okay, I'm going to move it a little bit down and yeah, kind of leave it there. Now the outlines are a little bit irritating still, so I'm going to press Command Shift H just to hide them and as well also now on the shape layer double tap on here and I'm just going to say stroke. So select stroke and also select the option stroke and first of all I'm going to change the color so double tap on here select exactly the same color as we have from our cube here from our shape again that and as you guys can see this fits in really nicely okay so I can still change the size now maybe to just four pixels or if you want to even six pixels but I think yeah well six also still works if you go up to eight that's a little bit too big already so I'm going to choose six again okay and just select okay over here and there you go, already we've created a really awesome simple fire equipment logo. Now again, for the last step over here that I still want to do is basically also get this just as a normal black and white logo. So first of all what I'll do is just turn off my background layer over here, 
go back to shape. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to strip over here and fire and just select both of these and make a duplicate of that. So Command J, put them all the way to the top, deselect strip light and free, or basically just strip here, not strip light. Okay, let's also move fire on top. Great. So next step that I'm going to do is just select the shape. And again, I'm going to also select the magic one tool here. Great. I also need to rasterize the shape. So I can quickly press Command J, rasterize this with right click, rasterize. And again, now I'm able to tap into this shape layer. Okay, I'm going to click over here. So we already get the shape and already a nice selection just from the shape. I'm also now in the marking tool option in a way. So I'm going to hit M for marking tool to just be sure. Right click and say select inverse. So it's actually selecting the outside of this. Now what I'm going to do is go back to fire copy here that we just did earlier. Also hit right click and say rasterize this font type as well. Now I'm going to hit delete. And first of all, in order to delete also the E over here. And we still need to delete the access spill here from the strip. So again, go to strip copy, delete this, and I can press command D. Now, very important, next steps. Again, I'm going to take this shape, delete it. First of all, we don't need that. Then as well, I'm going to take this fire, this strip, and this equipment, and the shape layer, all of these, and put them together in one group. This is my original file for creating the whole fire logo. So command G, again, I'm going to write here fire logo, great. And now I'm going to do actually a duplicate of that. So Command J, open this again. Let's also make a little bit of space here. And now we're going to move in the copy and the fire copy and the strip copy. Let's just move all of that back in here, like so. And we can delete strip and we can delete also fire. Great. Let's also just turn off fire logo at the bottom so we don't have that. And now you guys can already see how this looks um, without the extra spill here. Now, next step, I'm just going to go back to Fire Logo, right click and say merge the whole group. So I've got this all as a separate layer now. Let's go back to Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and we're just going to take the Master Saturation all the way down. And da da, directly you have it like almost in a black and white. Let's also take this a bit more down so we can actually see something again here. Like so, I'm just going to select Hue and Saturation again. And we can also try to just clip this again to the bottom layer. All right, so then as well, you can just clip this layer again to the bottom layer. So you also have it here kind of in a gray um, layer. Yeah, so again, I'm going to turn on the white at the bottom. And if you want, you can also turn that off and just have the fire logo like this. Yeah, so that's basically also all for this tutorial. If you guys like this tutorial, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Share it with all your friends that can benefit from this video. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.